Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we talk about 10 of the greatest slasher horror movies of all time. It's a bad time, this time of year. Connor is in the house. And let's get to the list. You're sick. Take your ah! pick. My bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine is a 1981 Canadian slasher horror movie directed by George Mialka and written by John Beard. It stars Paul Kilman, Laurie Hellier, and Neil Affleck. The plot's about a group of young adults who decide to throw a Valentine's Day party, only to incur the vengeful wrath of a maniac in mining gear who goes on a killing spree. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead, and so are you. This is a real classic in my opinion, and very underrated. It's always been one of my favorite slasher movies. I just love the look of the miner. He's so creepy and just dark, and just that not knowing what's behind the mask. And even though it doesn't have a ton of plot, I do enjoy the characters and the little bit of backstory that you do get. I also really love this time period, the way the movies looked in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And then the fact that this is in a small town just gives it a different feel from other slashers that are out there. And it doesn't get necessarily extremely gory, but it's gory enough that you get the point. In general, I just think the kills are interesting, especially because they use a pickaxe, and that's just something different than you've seen in other slashers. But this isn't a movie without flaws, but I think it's an absolute blast and definitely deserves to have its place as one of the best slasher movies ever made. You're sick, Terrifier 2 is a 2022 slasher horror movie, written, directed, edited, and produced by Damien Leone. It's a sequel to the 2016 film Terrifier and the third film to feature Art the Clown. It stars David Howard Thornton, Lauren Levera, and Elliot Fulham. The story follows Art's resurrection and his pursuit of Sienna Shaw and her younger brother on Halloween night. We have a very special guest with us today, all the way from Miles County. Please welcome Art the Clown. So this is the new kid on the block. And for a lot of people, they're probably questioning this pick because it is so new. And I even question myself, do I have reasons he bias? But I don't think so. Yes, it came out last year, and yes, I had it as one of my top movies. But when I compared it, and I put it up against all these other great slasher movies that have come before it, because yes, it's still on all the shoulders of all those great slashers, but I think this is this generation's great slasher movie because it adds some new flares, it pushes the boundaries, and nobody can question if Art the Clown is an entertaining, iconic figure because he brings as much as almost any slasher as far as charisma and just entertainment to the screen. And I said this a few years ago when I first saw Terrifier. I thought right then and there that Art the Clown would end up becoming an iconic figure. That he was going to become like one of those Mount Rushmore horror figures. And a lot of people questioned me. They were like, no way. You know, this is just some little dumb, low budget, crappy little horror movie. Yeah, it's fun, but that's where it's going to die. But I saw that glimmer. I saw in Art the Clown, what I saw in the beginning with Michael Myers, with Freddy Krueger, with all these other iconic figures. And honestly, he compares to any of those already. I think he's got that much, you know, screen presence. But it's savage and gory and pushes things as far as you pretty much can on a big screen right now. The practical effects are just insane. And this movie really was the talk of the entire horror world for a lot of last year. So I feel very confident in including this on this iconic list. You're sick, psychopath. <laughs> He just goes a little mad sometimes. 
Psycho is a 1960 psychological slasher horror movie. Directed by Alfred Hitchcock, it stars Anthony Perkins, Janet Leigh, and Vera Miles. The plot centers on an encounter between an on-the-run embezzler and a shy motel proprietor named Norman Bates. <laughs> What an absolutely iconic movie this is. I mean, this movie is even a part of the tram stop at Universal Studios, the house. It's just that iconic. Yes, there were other movies that contributed to taking and making that slasher type of horror movie possible, but this movie really impacted the horror world as much as almost anything before it because Alfred Hitchcock was just such a name and this movie was so different for the time. Norman Bates is such an interesting figure because he's likable in the beginning. You genuinely like him. Like if you don't know the twist in this movie and you just go in this watching it, you kind of like this poor shy kid. He's a good looking kid and just has this real likableness about him. But then the twist happens and absolutely shocked everyone that saw this movie because your titular star, the face you came to see, gets basically killed off in the first part of this movie and you're left going, what? What's next? And now we've seen that done with the Scream franchise and lots of other ones, but nobody had done anything that bold and that savage back then. On top of that, the shower scene is so iconic. Even though you don't really see any knife penetration, there's no real gore in this movie. It tricks your brain and makes you think that you see this absolutely savage, gory kill. And people swear even to this day that you do actually see some penetration, some gore, but you don't. You just don't really see anything other than blood running down the drain, but it's so effective the way it's shot. It's absolutely brilliant. This is just a gorgeously shot movie, well directed. The pacing is fantastic. I mean, it really goes without saying. It's Alfred Hitchcock, for God's sake. He is just one of the greatest filmmakers that's ever lived. But every shot and every scene in this seems impactful and seems well thought out and placed. And Anthony Perkins still absolutely shines in this role. And it's amazing to think that this is this young kid that pretty much had no experience going into this. But he just absolutely kills it in more ways than one in this this movie. I could go on and on and on about it because it's just that good. It's one of those few movies that I doubt very many of you are going to think it shouldn't be on this list. The only real question is, should it be this low on the list? And for me, it's like this. I plan to make more than one of these lists, and I just want to put shine on all the great movies that are in this subgenre. But this list is based on a few criteria. One is how much I like it, and two, is how much this movie impacted the genre in general. Beyond that, I also took into consideration the other movies that might be a part of that franchise. So to me, Psycho is a no-brainer. The only question is how high on your list. Black Christmas is a 1974 Canadian slasher horror movie. Oh, kidder. The story follows a group of sorority sisters who receive threatening phone calls, who are eventually stalked and murdered by a deranged killer during the Christmas season. <laughs> It always blows my mind every time I watch this movie because it's just so impactful. It's so dark, so creative and disturbing on so many levels, and yet it very much is still under the radar. You just still don't hear this movie talked about on the same level as other movies in the horror genre. And it blows my mind because not only is this an amazing slasher movie, it's also a fantastic horror movie. The acting by these young performers is so well done. You can really feel their terror and pain in their performances in this. This movie feels absolutely ice cold and without any remorse. The only question about this movie is not is it a great movie, but is it too disturbing and uncomfortable for the masses? And I think the question is yes. I think that's why you don't hear this bantied about as much as you probably should. It's because it's not a very fun movie. It's an uncomfortable, dark, kind of depressing, cold, moody movie. And on that level, I absolutely get that. But. I feel like it is still important to recognize its greatness, and I think it's only fair to recognize and include it with the other great horror movies of all time. You're sick, psychopath. Friday, the 13th. You may only see it once, but that will be enough. Friday the 13th is a 1980 slasher horror movie. Produced and directed by Sean S. Cunningham, it was written by Victor Miller and stars Betsy Palmer, Adrian King, and Kevin Bacon. The plot follows a group of teenage camp counselors who are murdered one by one by an unknown killer. 
So I thought about putting my favorite Friday the 13th in this spot, and that would be part six. But I decided against that because in this case, I want to recognize where it all began. And even though this isn't necessarily the most fun for me to watch, I think it is the most important. Plus, it is also one I enjoy. So the combination of the two is why I put this here. But I just wanted to recognize that my personal favorite, the one I had the most fun with, is part six. But this movie has really had a huge impact on the horror world, and it's been a real bummer the last 10 years or so since we've had a new movie in this franchise. There's a legal battle going on, but supposedly it has been worked out, the court case ended, and we are getting a series, if you're not aware, over on Peacock called Crystal Lake. And I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be fantastic. But. I'd love to see a new movie in this franchise as well. But this movie in particular, I recently went and saw it at a theater. And it was a lot of fun because I had never seen this on the big screen. And so it was just really amazing to see it that way and to really kind of gather in what the people back then must have felt. Because it's one thing seeing this on your TV, but it's a whole nother thing seeing it that way, the way that they would have seen it back then. And you could just really feel how impactful this movie must have been, how surprising the end was, and just how different in a lot of ways this movie is. But really, it's just a fun movie. And yes, the other movies in the franchise would eventually get even more fun. And at some point, they kind of got a little too far with Jason X, but, this one, this is where it all started. But you could feel that this movie has that seed of entertainment because the young cast is really a lot of fun to watch. And the way the kills are done with Savini are just breathtaking, especially for the time. This is a legendary film and one of the best ever made. He's here. Candyman is a 1992 supernatural slasher horror movie written and directed by Bernard Rose and based on Clive Barker's short story, The Forbidden. It stars Tony Todd, Virginia Madsen, and Cassie LeMans. The story is about the Candyman, a murderous soul with a hook for a hand, who is accidentally summoned to reality by a skeptic grad student researching the monster's myth. The legend first appeared in 1890. He was attacked, mutilated, and burned to death. Candyman. I absolutely love The Candyman. And over the years, I've seen this movie rise in the ranks, so to speak, and be respected more and more and more. And I'm sure most of you would probably have it lower on your list. Definitely not above Friday the 13th or, or whatever. But for me, it's one of the most original. It has heart. It's well written. And The Candyman himself just has this amazing presence. Tony Todd is just absolutely iconic in this role with that voice there's just so much power and mood and atmosphere about this movie everything from the art the way it's shot in the city that it's in just everything about this movie is absolutely fantastic and i honestly believe that as the years go by this movie is going to rise even higher unfortunately the most recent remake reboot requel whatever you want to call it from a couple years ago just didn't do what I hoped it would. It, it was good, I actually liked it, but I didn't love it, and I do get a lot of the problems people had with it, but I do still feel like it was a good movie, but if it had been, you know, like a reawakening of the franchise, the way we've seen things reawaken in the Scream franchise, if that had happened here, I think this original would be even more respected and, and would really be talked about way more. But I do think if in the future someone can make a sequel to this that really merits people being excited, you know, across the board, I think you're going to see this talked about even more. But who knows what the future holds, but for me, when I take all the different criteria that I have for this list, this movie is absolutely iconic and just so entertaining, and the rewatchability of this is really high as well because it has so much meat on that bone. You're going to really see something different every time you watch it and really appreciate even more of what this movie is trying to say and do. This movie is incredible and absolutely one of my all-time favorites. You're sick, psychopath. <laughs> Not scared, are you? 
Scream is a 1996 slasher horror movie directed by Wes Craven and written by Kevin Williamson. The film stars Nev Campbell, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, and Matthew Lillard. A year after the death of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a new killer who targets the girl and her friends while wearing a cloak and a mask. They were worn by the killer. It all began with the scream over 911, like the plot of some scary movie. Hello, Sydney. Do you like scary movies? So this movie is very important to me because this was really the first horror movie for me that I was able to go with friends to see in theaters. And I was right around the same age, a little younger, but right around the same age as the cast. So it was really submersive for me. I just really felt like I was one of them and in this situation. And it really just impacted me in a really different way than any movie had to that point. And I just had so much fun with it. It really is one of the big staples for me that made me fall in love with the horror genre. And then as I got older and I started to discover how important this movie was and how much of an impact it had and how many movies came out trying to recapture what it did. And some of them were good and some of them were absolute trash, but they were all trying to capture what this movie had done. It just had this huge impact in the horror world because nothing had been really done like this. Nothing had had the impact that this had, but also the way it was meta, the way it called out the horror world and was like, hey, you know, you guys are getting stale. Like this horror genre is becoming stale and full of tropes and nothing new, nothing different is being done. And it was just calling all those creators, all those writers, all those people that created movies, it was calling them out and being like, hey, it's time to do something different. It's time to, to break the mold and do something different, especially with a slasher movie. Because other forms of horror were being creative and different. But as far as slasher movies, they had become so trope heavy that you could pretty much call the shots. You knew what was gonna happen, when it was gonna happen, and it was like rinse, repeat. Every summer, there would be another slasher that would do basically the same thing, rinse, repeat. They would make a few bucks, they didn't cost much to make, and so you just kept seeing these pump out for years and years and years. So when this came out, we had all seen those. We were all familiar with that terminology, and it was so fun to see that on screen and to see people like us saying a lot of the same things that we thought that we felt. And the cast in this was so amazing. So many iconic performances. Matthew Lillard, who I'm still hoping somehow can be added back into the franchise. Yes, I'm one of those people that thinks maybe he's still alive in some way, shape or form. But it's really great to see the Scream world being brought back with these new ones and just these young people being excited about this franchise. And even if you don't love these most latest Scream movies, if you're a fan of the Scream franchise, it's still exciting and fun to be a part of. I think the Scream franchise is one of the most fun out there and one that there is no question for me deserves to be on this list. You're sick, psychopath. <laughs> A Nightmare on Elm Street is a 1984 supernatural slasher horror movie. Written and directed by Wes Craven, it stars Heather Langenkamp, Robert England, and Johnny Depp. The story is about a teenager, Nancy Thompson, who uncovers a dark truth hidden by her parents after her and her friends become targets of the spirit of a serial killer. Freddy, it's his name and he's in all of our heads. He's one who's trying to kill us in our dreams. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. I mean, what more is there to say about Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street? I don't know anyone, especially of my age group, that doesn't love Nightmare on Elm Street. It's just so iconic, so entertaining, it's badass, it just has all the things. And the sequels after this just became more and more entertaining. Yes, they kind of went too far with it, but I feel like they found that perfect balance with number three. But once again, like I did with Friday the 13th, I wanted to talk about the original, where it started, because this original movie is so iconic. My favorite one, though, to watch, the one that I'm most entertained by, is probably the third. But this original is such an amazing film. And a lot of people forget, if you haven't seen the original in a while, how dark and disturbing it was. Freddy Krueger was not fun-loving. He was much more terrifying and just grim and really, really evil and just this very much creepy figure. And even though I do love the funny, charismatic version of Freddy Krueger, 
I gotta say, I love that darker, evil version of him too. Because he genuinely feels scary, unnerving, and just creepy in this movie. And it never ceases to blow my mind the thought that Wes Craven not only did the Scream franchise, but he did this one. I mean, how iconic is that? I mean, the fact that out of 10 movies that I'm listing here, two of them were created by Wes Craven. That, that in and of itself just is amazing. It just sucks that we're losing these iconic figures like him and George A. Romero and Toby Hooper. But luckily we still have his movies. That's one of the really cool things about the art of film because we still have their craft. We still have this thing that they made and you could just feel their ideas and, and it's just a beautiful thing. But the performances in this movie are incredible because Nancy Thompson has got to be, if not my favorite final girl, she's definitely right up there. And then Robert England's performance as Freddy Krueger is just legendary. I mean, Freddy Krueger will have you laughing and then also hiding in fear the next second. Just an absolutely great performance in this movie. To me, Nightmare on Elm Street is that gold standard of horror and definitely one of my favorites of all time. You're sick, psychopath. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a 1974 cannibal slasher horror movie produced and directed by Toby Hooper from a story and screenplay by Hooper and Kim Hinkle. It stars Marilyn Burns, Gunnar Hansen, and Edwin Neal. The story follows a group of friends who fall victim to a family of cannibals while on their way to visit an old homestead. Man, this movie is badass. It really took and pushed the film world to a whole different level because it came at people with the most savage, dirty, grisly, nightmare-fueled kind of performances and filmmaking that you possibly could. It was created in a time where directors were really pushing the boundaries, trying things different, and really taking anything and everything idea-wise and whatever resources they had and just throwing them at their projects. Because this was made with little to no resources, very little of anything but it was people that are passionate and believed in what they were doing and created it. And yeah, I've heard the nightmare stories of the filmmaking of this. It couldn't have been a pleasant time, but I appreciate so much everyone involved sacrifices. Because of that, we got this amazing film. It's inspired so many different artists, not only in the movie industry, but in music in theater, in physical medium art, just every type of artist has been affected by this movie and that's incredible. And it always blows my mind how little actual gore you see in this movie because it feels so savage, it feels so horrible. You really feel the pain in these performances and yet you don't ever see the real gore. You don't see her penetrated on the hook, and yet in your mind's eye, you feel like you do. And that's just really a testament to the filmmaking of Hooper and the performances of everybody involved in this. And also out of this, we got this iconic family of cannibals, the Sawyer family, which people have tried, but no one has ever been able to capture just the way this group felt in this movie. They're so just dirty, grimy, horrific, and just demented on so many levels. It's amazing. I love it. And you also have this brilliant performance by Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface. Just another absolutely iconic character. This is a tremendous, iconic, absolute classic, and one that every fan of horror should see. <laughs> Halloween is a 1978 slasher horror movie directed and scored by John Carpenter. It was written by Carpenter and Deborah Hill and stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, and PJ Souls. 15 years after murdering his sister on Halloween night, Michael Myers escapes from a mental hospital and returns to the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois to kill again. I met this six-year-old child, blank, pale, emotionless face. Blackest eyes, the devil's eyes, 
So there is absolutely no question for me what my favorite slasher is. And I'm not saying that everyone else should agree. I think that most people at least consider this to be one of the best, but I know that a lot of people may not have this as their number one, but for me personally, it is, without a doubt. It is one of those movies that I look forward to every year. I always, always, always make a plan to watch this movie the week of Halloween, at least some point in that week leading up to Halloween. I get my caramel corn, popcorn, candy corn, I get my treats together and just sit down and just soak in the vibes that this movie has. I love the atmosphere. I love the look of it. I love the pacing of it. There is honestly nothing I don't love and appreciate about this movie. And beyond all that, this movie is so iconic and its impact it had on the horror world can just not be measured. It really did put the horror world, especially slashers, it put them on the map. Without this movie, we definitely wouldn't have a lot of these others that I've talked about on this list, but there's just something so mesmerizing, so captivating about Michael Myers. Just that emotionless mask that just sits there blink white and just stares into you. Like, you know, just haunting feeling that it has. And then the kills, every one of them is so iconic. And Jamie Lee Curtis, I mean, she's another one that's gotta be up there in that top few Final Girl, she may be my number one. I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll make that list too, but she's just amazing. Everything from her scream, her emotion, so much just comes out onto this screen. And for such a young performer, you could see in this performance how big of a career she was gonna go on to have. And I really think it's cool that she finally got that Academy Award because she is such a great performer all the way back into this movie. But this movie absolutely encapsulates that feeling of Halloween for me. Everything from seeing the trick-or-treaters, the fall leaves, everything about it is so iconic and just feels like a real, real Halloween for me. And it's funny because there's all these stories about it. It's filmed in California, so there wasn't leaves. So they actually brought in leaves and scattered them around and only had a few. It's just a very funny story. But it feels like it for me. I live in Northern California, so my Halloween doesn't look much different than that. What the kids wear, they're not wearing jackets or whatever like a lot of places did that time of year. But anyway, I digress. I just love this movie. And even though I wasn't a huge fan of this most recent trilogy of Halloween movies, I do still love how much this franchise is up front and center and talked about and popular because like I said, it's my favorite, man. I absolutely love Michael Myers and love this movie. Every single thing about it, there isn't anything I would change. And so it is definitely my number one. So that's my list, but I would love to make a part two. So down in the comments, let me know where I screwed up. Let me know what movies I'm missing, what movies you would have on your list. And if I can get another list together, I'll come at you with a second part. But that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because that's the best way to keep track of this channel. And when I post videos like this, and I post videos like this every single week, I also wanna give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to the Ghost Pirate crew, to you guys over on Patreon, and to the channel members over here. You guys mean so, so, so much to me. And if you would like to find out how you can become a part of the Ghost Pirate crew over on Patreon, there's a link down in the description. Or if you want to become a channel member, there's a little button right down there that says join. But you got to be on a PC to see the button. They don't make that available on phones and tablets yet. Don't know why YouTube doesn't have that fixed, but anyway. But like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, horror can be fun. And if you enjoyed this, click right here to see 10 of my absolute favorite vampire movies. And I'll see you guys next time.